I am a highly sensitive person myself. And I was very emotional as a teenager. And my mom didn't know how to handle me. I didn't know how to handle me. <laughs> right. right? I mean, I just acted out because I was resisting what everyone was trying to shove down my throat about who I should be. And well, I've talked to you, Linda. I grew up in a blended family as well. And so I, my mom just, well, I lost my voice and, um, you know, it's taken me to, it's taken me many years to claw myself out of that. Right. Right. But now here I am raising a highly sensitive child who has a lot of emotional reactions and well, those beginning years with my kids. Yeah. I did not knock it out of the park. Um, it's taken me until now and certainly doing that self work to recognize how I was repeating a pattern. Oh, and, yeah, right? I totally get that. I, yeah. I was leading with fear and I was trying to shove it down my kids' throats, even though from a soul level, I didn't agree with it. Right. But I was getting, you know, you get that vibration, right? I was talking about earlier from the world. And they look right. at you and they judge you and they question your thinking. And if you're not strong enough, if you haven't built up that inner resilience, right. oh my gosh, it'll just eat you up. Or that was my journey. Oh, it's kind of in a way very similar because I've gone through very similar stuff. Uh, voices differ a little bit because I couldn't express. I didn't really know. It's only after I um, after I had a kid that I started standing up because I did not want to make the same mistakes that I was yeah. Yeah. and I started standing out standing up for myself and, and others more and more and more. It was not a conscious decision. I just became like that. And it was more of a protective mm -hmm. instinct maybe. I don't know. And um, yeah, I, I, these days I'm more conscious of what I'm doing because um, I've listened enough and I guess I, I get a fair chance at my life the way I want it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I remember being in my 30s and watching a, another girl kind of like process through like her parents and stuff and it was like, the 30s are it's a really painful time because you need a mother but you don't have a mother because you basically you're seeing all the things that are wrong with your mother all the patterns all the whatever that isn't true that you really feel you you, you want to break them because you don't want to pass them on you're just so generationally conscious and yeah all like all of my 30s just felt super, super painful. And then <clears throat> when I went into menopause, I have a chapter in the book, Menopause Mavens. Um, and I said, well, I don't have any trouble with menopause. I don't know why I'd be in your compilation book. And <laughs> Jane was like, well, the, you know, in getting to know you, you, you have like two stories in, in your life and like they're coming up now in menopause and because you shared them with me. And I'm like, all right. So fine, you know, so I, I did my chapter. None of us knew um, what the other was writing. It was totally out of ego um, compilation book. And it blew my ass away to get my copy and <laughs> see that the opening story, the um, this other gal that she wrote it with, were kind of like the lead authors and then the contributing authors because they called each other and it's like you're gonna believe this you're sitting down i'm in menopause me too you know and now what do we do right <laughs> and so then they got health coaches and different people with different stories together for the book anyways the other gal we knew from like high-end coaching she um she, her story opens the book with a knock on the door and it's a coroner telling her her husband's committed suicide mm. and i'm like what because my story, which was put second to the last in the book, so we didn't have to end with the depressing story, um, was, was getting a knock on the door while I'm over babysitting. 
And my uncle's there, and my uncle's like, he never comes over, like, what the heck? And two two janitorial cars, Conclico was the company that my grandfather built, and my dad worked for me, and my uncle worked for me. And they were out front of our house. I was like, and he goes, your grandpa's over. He'd like to talk to you. He's talking to your mom and your brother right now. And, you know, you need to go home. And I'm like, well, but I'm babysitting. He goes, oh, I'll watch the kids. And then that was really creeping me out. I was like, what? So, yeah. So that's how my story opens. And so I lost my father to suicide and I lost my dance career, supposedly, you know, a few months later in a gymnastics accident. Yeah, it was, it was, it's a good book. It, it has a lot of helpful tips for menopause as well. But, wow. you know, it's just interesting. And then in your 40s, you won't listen to anybody. And you're like <laughs> 18 again, you know, like, you know it all. And you've listened to people and it didn't work anyways. And it just, it's a it's funny era that way too. 